powering on, ready to connect. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel for yet another Seastar S50 video. Now what we're going to try to photograph tonight is actually the Ghost Nebula which can be found in the constellation of Cassiopeia. Now what's difficult about this nebula is the fact that it is an emission nebula uh, composed mainly of H-alpha data. But another thing that really is a big component of this nebula is in fact the oxygen data. Uh, and the thing with this oxygen data is that it's very dim. It's very hard for uh, even larger telescopes to pick up to get a good amount of detail without a crazy long amount of exposure time. But we're going to see uh, what the sea star is actually able to do in regards to trying to pick up that data uh, and see what we can do with it later on in post-processing. So let's go ahead and get to work. Alright, so here is the first line of data already processed. As you can see, we can see a lot of the hydrogen alpha data in here. Uh, the, as I you know, mentioned earlier in the video, the oxygen data wasn't as easy for me to pull out uh, in serial. But I'm pretty happy with what we were able to get with just about three hours of exposure, of course. We're not just going to settle with this only three hours. You know, as I always say, I like to push things to its limit, uh, see how far things can go, see how much uh, detail and data we can get. Uh, so that's what we're going to continue to do. I actually am supposed to have several nights worth of clear skies. Uh, so I'm going to use that to the fullest, um, both on this target and uh, target for the next video. Uh, so you guys are going to see that a little bit later on. But uh, let's go ahead and try to get more data and stack that in later on. Of course, I'm not going to continue showing you guys, you know, uh, an example of every single thing I stacked, you know, processed. Uh, but we're just going to get all of the data and bring it into serial at the last part uh, so that we can see what C-Star S50 was able to get in regards to I six IC63, uh, uh, also known as the Ghost Nebula and Cassiopeia. So uh, hopefully you guys will stay tuned and we will continue uh, gathering the data for our final processing later at the end of the video. All right, so we now have the data inside. Uh, as you can see, we have the IC63 folder. Now, each of these different files are the different nights of data um, all stacked together. I'm sure you can remember that a little bit earlier in the video, we sh I showed you uh, one night worth of data stacked and processed, but now I'm really excited to show you guys what three nights worth of data is gonna get for us on uh, this particular nebula. Let me show you one more time, just this, um, this one night, uh, obviously it's all, all stacked together, uh, unprocessed. We're going to show you what it looks like in auto stretch. 
This is our auto stretched image of IC63. It's pretty cool because you can already see the ghost nebula right here, pretty much the entire thing, a lot of the H alpha data, and the star is very nice and clear as well. But I'm very excited to see what we can get once we stack all three of these things together. So let's open up Serial. Go home and set our image directory. Let's see here, it's on our desktop. IC63, open, and we're just gonna stack these stacked files together. All right, those stacked files are now stacked. It only took 1.46 seconds. Obviously it took longer to stack all the individual FITS files together. Uh, but let's take a look at what we got. Here's our reveal here. I'm honestly nervous, but quite excited. Hopefully I didn't waste all my time doing all of this. And boom, here is our ghost nebula. Obviously, once again, unprocessed. Uh, but you can see actually a big difference between uh, this one and the first night of data that we got. There's a whole lot more nebulosity visible, and it's much clearer as well. Now I'm excited to see what we can do for some processing. So obviously... Uh, we're going to do our normal run through. Let's go ahead and do our background extraction. Generate that. Obviously lower that down, but a lot. Just however it feels sufficient for you. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and add some more in wherever you feel like some are missing. I'm happy with that. Compute background, apply that. Uh, next thing, we go to our color calibration photometric. I should already have the coordinates in here. If not, you can just type in IC63, hit find, and the coordinates should show up here, as you can see here. I'll hit OK here. Uh, let me just go ahead and get the metadata from the image, because this is honestly more accurate. Hit OK. OK, it says uh, image cannot be aligned with a reference star, so maybe uh, we just need to crop it first. So let's go ahead and crop this. There we go should be sufficient let's go ahead and crop uh do the photometric color calibration now get metadata from image hit okay okay still uh did not work correctly so uh instead of doing that we're just going to go ahead and rotate our image because i do know which way it's supposed to be fading so uh geometry rotate and crop no we're actually not going to rotate it at, uh crop it at all so let's change that image processing geometry and we do our 90 degrees clockwise let's see let's do it again geometry 90 degrees clockwise and here we go here's our image obviously it doesn't need to be flipped so let's flip that geometry uh let's see vertical mirror and there we go it is now uh, properly rotated and flipped the way it needs to be let's save that now let's run our star processing start at star removal on this uh, but first, there's one more step I forgot to do. It's our remove green noise. Apply that. As you can see, it did get rid of a slight green tint that we had. Uh, so it looks much cleaner now. Let's go ahead and do our uh, star processing, star net, star removal now. Uh, always pre-stretch linear image. Switch this to uh, linear before you actually do this. And hit execute. Uh, and allow star net to finish. Now, honestly, I have to say that even without doing any processing on it, I'm pretty happy with the image. Those who perhaps have a C-star uh, don't really want to do a lot of processing. You could potentially get this good of an image as well. Uh, even if you just wanted to stack it on your phone uh, in a uh, processing software such as, um, let's see, there's Google Snapseed. You could potentially do double exposures on that and just play around with it, see what you can get. But let's auto-stretch this. And obviously, there's so much detail here. Um, I'm very happy with how it looks, honestly. Extremely happy. Let me go to linear, though see this one might be a little bit difficult though i'm i am slightly anticipating some some difficultness since it is a reflection nebula somewhat hard to process but let's bump it up obviously it's too high but let me go ahead and select this area here reset it and set our symmetry point again there we go should be okay now let's clip our black point here. The important thing is that we don't clip all of our data. Um, make sure that it's nice and clean always. I uh, don't want to clip it too much. We can hit apply here, hit close. Go to our histogram transformation. Oops, wrong button. Imaging processing, histogram transformation. 
set that to one and kind of bring up the black just a bit more there we go that should be a dark enough image uh, we can actually bring a little bit more in here in regards to light and bring up the black just a tiny bit more and that's happy i'm happy i'm happy with what we have here uh, let's go to image processing and bring up the color now obviously you don't want to oversaturate your image apply honestly look at the clarity of this nebulosity that we have here it's it's quite impressive what the sea star was able to bring out uh let me know what you guys think in the comments i think this is pretty cool even without stars you know we have this bright star here of course uh but i would just save you know i actually am going to save this as is because uh, i do think it's pretty neat even without the stars uh but obviously we do want to try to get some stars in here so star processing starting at recomposition let's bring the stars back in starless result and oop let me try that again image processing star processing star recomposition starless result that fit yeah i believe i just did not actually save it so let me let me run through that again we'll skip through uh, all that information all right let's try our star recomposition one more time image processing uh star start recomposition uh by the way this also goes to show the importance of saving your image always make sure you save your image once you're done with the step and are happy with it uh so let me see throw this result that fit open and as you can see we have it now saved uh and our star mask result that fit and save that as well go ahead and bring the stars back in by bumping up the stretch factor obviously uh do it to your liking personally i prefer it without too many stars uh but maybe some people would prefer it with you know a lot of stars maybe no stars at all almost but personally i prefer it with only a few so i'm just going to save it like this apply close and save as a unique file and let's go check that out exit ic63 and open this file now everyone i hope you can tell me what you guys think of what we were able to get with just three nights worth of data uh, with sea stars 50 on ic63 now remember this is a reflection nebula quite hard to uh to see you know obviously this is the brightest part of it but a lot of telescopes aren't even able to get uh this part of the reflection nebula nor this one here you know honestly this would be considered dark nebula had the star been not lighting all of this up uh but i'm honestly quite impressed with sea star uh was able to get out of it um, please let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys are interested in purchasing a C-Star, I also have the link below. Uh, make sure you go ahead and check that out as well if you don't already have a C-Star S50. Um, I'm honestly quite, I'm very, I'm very impressed with how this looks. I'm happy with how it came out. Perhaps we could potentially, uh, you know, do further processing even in your Windows laptop. Maybe you could bring in some coloration uh, if you weren't happy with the saturation amount, just like that. You know, you could play around with it. Uh, just see whatever it is to your liking um, and you know obviously you could use other programs as well such as PixInsight um, or even Deep Sky Stacker you know whatever whatever suits your fancy obviously my favorite is going to be Serial probably always because uh, it is free and I prefer free things because I am I am cheap uh, if I'm being completely honest I don't like spending a lot of money <laughs> but anyways uh, I'm pretty happy with how this looks let me know what you guys think in the comments and uh, yeah uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video uh, somewhat informative i am hoping that it was for you please leave a like and subscribe honestly it does really truly help the channel out a lot so um, again i really hope you enjoyed the video and please stay tuned for future content